Well, for more on the markets, let's bring in Toro USA investment analyst Callie Cox. Nice to see you. We will talk about the Fed. We will talk about the bond yields. Let's start with the 30,000 foot view of the FedEx earnings coming out early. Given what we saw with the pre-release, um, what does it tell you about the, the macro economy? It was Raj Subramanian, their new CEO, that said we are a reflection of everybody else's business. So what does it tell you? Man, he took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, <laughs> I'll say it too. It's a reflection of how tough the in operating environment is right now, especially with companies who have that global exposure. And obviously FedEx has exposure to global trade and global shipments. I mean, that's one of the biggest worries for us right now. And we're generally an optimistic research team, but the fact that rates are so high, costs are so high, and there are so many changing parts, that's just not an easy environment for any company to navigate much less some of the smaller, more speculative companies that have been in favor over the past year or so. So, Kelly, what does that mean then for the next couple of months? I guess, how big of a slowdown do you think we are likely to see and how will that be reflected in equities? Yeah, that's a tough question because I think the, the degree of the slowdown is something that everybody's questioning. Uh, I mean, right now, we don't see it to be so much that we hit a severe recession. But honestly, with what Jay Powell said yesterday and how hard they're going to hit have to hit that hammer to get inflation down. I mean, we could see a big, uh, bigger slowdown than we thought. It really depends on, well, A, how high rates go from here, B, how quickly the Fed can get inflation under control, and C, how much collateral damage we'll have to see in the job market. Uh, but, you know, right now, those are the three things we're watching, and honestly, that correlates with what we're expecting in the markets ahead. And you've called this a battle-tested market, a lot of negative sentiment. Do you expect that to change or perhaps is it overly negative? Are they pricing in the risks correctly right now? Well, the mood is extremely negative. I mean, if you look at the AAII numbers that came out today, we saw like the fourth or fifth most bearish reading in like decades or so. I mean, both retail and institutional investors, even though some are holding on, they're still incredibly fearful of the environment. And honestly, this is a battle-tested market. We've seen all the headlines that this market has made it through this year. So in our eyes, that's a great thing. Uh, it doesn't necessarily preclude us from dealing with that slowdown that Shauna mentioned. But at the same time, it does, you know, keep investors in check a little bit. It does keep investors hedged. Hedged, you know, they might be on the sidelines more than they are taking risk in these markets. And that puts a bottom in the stock market. It means that if we see any better than expected headlines, and the bar is low right now, by the way, if we see any better than expected headlines, we could see investors rush in and, you know, as a result of that, see those quick relief rallies. And to the bond yields, which Rochelle mentioned off the top, in particular, the two-year 07 highs, tells you what about the pain to come? Well, that's a psychological thing. Uh, and I think about this a lot, uh, a lot on my end. I mean, the fact that short-term rates are so high right now uh, really makes the decision difficult when you're looking at, you know, investing for the long term, the duration, if you will, investing for the long term versus picking up those rates in the short term. I mean, for so long, we had such low short-term rates that it was almost a given to people to, you know, extend their risk across the curve and put their money out there and take on that risk, the TINA trade. Uh, but now it's not so obvious. Um, and, you know, we see rates moving up in savings accounts, too. I mean, we get a lot of questions from our customers just about, you know, the balance between stocks and cash and how you can actually make a decent rate on cash now. Kelly, do you see the rising rates? Uh, do you see that trend easing at any point soon? Well, so the 10 year broke 3.5 percent. I was really shocked by that. <laughs> that was that seemed to be a pretty strong technical level. Uh, so from here, I think it's really hard to tell. I think it's going to depend on the Fed's, the Fed's pace and just exactly where they stop with rate hikes. And I want to ask you, obviously, we have the, the strong dollar. You have some of these economic headwinds coming out of Europe. What, how does that mix into this stew of what we're looking at and how it might impact the U.S. markets? Yeah, well, it just murphies the water uh, of what the Fed is trying to do here. Because obviously, while the Fed is hiking and while the U.S. is on the growth path, path it is right now, uh, the dollar is going to get stronger. And unfortunately, the, the effect of that is it crushes the euro and by extension, European growth. It almost effectively exports our inflation over to Europe. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, I mean, the global economy is just so interconnected these days. So you have to really watch the currencies here because we have a lot of companies with overseas markets and a lot of European exposure. So what we've been 
telling customers is to really understand what they're investing in and to know even if they are U.S. investors, they probably have some kind of European exposure there and they should be watching the dollar.